Hi, so if you are watching this, it means you've already watched part one, the lesson for the biology summer exploration, and you are ready to move on to parts two and three, which is analyzing a habitat and then looking at an organism that may or may not fit in that habitat. So here we go. So habitat analysis, that's a fancy word for looking at the environment around a very specific area to evaluate the conditions for a specific species of wildlife. So you see in this picture, we have a deer laying here. This could very well be, you know, somewhere that you've seen before. You may have seen a deer laying in the woods. And in this particular example, they would be evaluating whether what this deer has available to eat, what this deer has available in the uh, terms of habitat, food, water, shelter. And this is important because at some level, wildlife is all dependent and therefore controlled um, based on its habitat and what's available to the organism in the habitat that it lives. So here's an example of a prediction after a habitat analysis of the redwood, because I don't want us to only think of habitat analysis in terms of animals. Habitat analysis could very well be also in terms of plants. So we have our redwood trees that are available out on the West Coast in California and Oregon up there. And, and you can see the change over time of the distribution and looking at the trends in global temperature and precipitation and the impact that will have on the redwood. So here's um, just a little example of a habitat analysis for a plant. So habitat analysis can actually be not only a career, but it could be an entire business. So this is an example of a web page, a screenshot of a web page who their company actually does multidimensional habitat analysis as their business. And so what they do is they discover um, what the environment receives from the species that they host. So we have this symbiotic relationship that you may have saw in the lesson, the summer exploration lesson video, which was part one. So you saw how different organisms interact with each other. But, and you see how living organisms interact with the non-living aspects of their environment. So this particular company will do an entire analysis and it may be important for um, something such as uh, construction, for example. If a developer is looking to put in a building or a new development or a business or um, even a road, a highway, they may need to do a habitat analysis to see what species would be disturbed, to see how they could um, replenish the habitat that got disturbed. So for example, uh, in this, they're talking a little bit about wolves and when wolves were an active part of the ecosystem and the balance between the wolves and the elk. So they did look at this. This is one company and they do an entire uh, analysis as their business. So here's an example of a screenshot of that particular company and what they did with this species of salmon. After they did an analysis, they then uh, came up with from the analysis what they would need to do to the environment to recover the salmon's habitat. So this is an entire project that was done in order to recover the, the habitat of a very specific species of salmon that was having um, an issue with their population size. So here's a restored area. It doesn't look like human intervention, but it is because originally there was something that was causing the salmon to have uh, their habitat be deconstructed. So whether it was human interaction or a, a landslide or so something that, um, a flood, something that could have happened naturally, or it could have been a human impact that caused destruction to the habitat. 
So what we see here is an engineered log jam, and that is to help the salmon maintain water so that they're able to spawn, they're able to come up the river and go ahead and use that as their spawning areas to be able to reproduce. So this is an area, an example, where that particular company restored this area for the salmon. So what you're going to do is part two of this wonderful summer exploration is your habitat analysis. So you're gonna be guided through questions in a pear deck, which is the same pear deck you already opened. You have one pear deck for parts one, two, and three of this project. So if you found the pear deck for part one, that's right where you need to be for your habitat analysis. You're gonna take some detailed observations of a habitat. That habitat is going to be somewhere that's easily accessible to you. I'd say the majority of you will do a habitat right in Wayne, New Jersey. You can do the um, area around your school. All three middle schools do have some natural areas behind or off to the sides of the school. So you could do around your school. Or let's say you take a vacation somewhere. Maybe you're down the shore. Maybe you're up in Maine. I don't know where you might be this summer, but you could very well <clears throat> make observations of a habitat that is not in Wayne if you happen to be away while you're doing this project. So you could use around the school. You could use uh, the, the natural areas around William Patterson. You could use the natural areas around Pines Lake. Tom's Lake. There's many different areas in Wayne where you can go, maybe even your own backyard, where you can analyze a habitat. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the food, water, shelter, and space available to a specific community um, and see what that habitat has to offer. So here's a little screenshot out of the pear deck that you will be using. So the very first thing is to mark the location. So if you were to click on this, link instructions come up for how it's a little youtube video of how to figure out the longitude and latitude of the area you're analyzing right from your cell phone you'll be able to get latitude and longitude so the date of the observation the habitat type so you can use this link for more information about different habitats and you're going to use that to help you identify the type of habitat you are using Next, your climate. You're going to use this link for information on climate on the month you are observing your habitat. So you're going to find the month and then click on weather in month and you will record that. That will help you. This, once again, is going in the pear deck that you already use for part one of this project. Next, continuing on analyzing your habitat, you have your soil type and the slope of the soil. So you're going to, when it says her, circle or highlight the words, you're just circling or highlighting to make the statement true. So you're either choosing the soil is suitable for growing plants or the soil is not suitable for growing plants. So directions for after the habitat analysis. You're gonna answer all of the following questions after completing the project. So in your pear deck, if there's multiple responses, you're, a box is gonna come up to the right where you can answer the questions. You're just going to number your responses. And then all parts of this project, just as a reminder, are due by the first day of school. So our habitat suitability. When you look at your pear deck, you all of these are hyperlinks and they'll give you a little profile of each one of these organisms. So once you've analyzed your habitat, you're going to pick a species from the list below and you're going to use this in order to determine if the area you've inventoried is suitable for your species that you've selected. So for example, you may be picking the black bear so you may be looking at the profile of the black bear at the link here, and you are going to be matching that profile and its habitat suitability to the habitat you've analyzed. So you're gonna, these questions will come up in the pear deck. And like I said, a box will come up to the right for you to answer the questions about the habitat. And then you're going to apply 
what you which organism you just picked from the list on the slide before. So all of the questions are going to be specific to your habitat and your organism that you selected. And then as the very last thing is we're going to discuss the suitability. So after we've analyzed the habitat, and then after we've learned about the organism you've selected, you're going to decide, does that organism's needs, um, can they be met by the habitat you've analyzed? So is that habitat suitable to survive in the habit to, is that habitat suitable to support the organism you selected? And you're gonna give supporting evidence from your habitat analysis. All right. And that is the last slide there. It does also tell you that you're going to try and take a picture of your habitat to submit also when you do turn this in on the first day of school. So thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, please reach out via email. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.